Have you ever wondered what it truly means to be alive? To exist in this vast universe, a conscious speck against the infinite darkness? Now, imagine waking up one day to the horrifying realization that everything you thought you knew about yourself, your identity, your very essence, is a lie. Welcome to the existential horror of self-awareness. In this video, we will delve into the darkest corners of consciousness, exploring the unsettling questions that plague philosophers and scientists alike. What is consciousness? Is there a self? And what if the answer is nothing? Prepare to confront the hard problem of consciousness, the illusion of self, and the possibility of a dark consciousness lurking beneath the surface of our reality. But fear not, brave explorer. We will also explore some mind-bending theories like panpsychism and the simulation hypothesis that might just offer a glimmer of hope in the face of this existential dread. So buckle up, grab a metaphorical flashlight, and join us as we journey into the unknown the terrifying and exhilarating world of self-awareness. Welcome to the Abyss of Wisdom. The basics of consciousness. Now, before we plummet down the rabbit hole of existential dread, let's establish a baseline. What exactly is this consciousness? We're so worried about losing. In its simplest form, Consciousness is the state of being aware of yourself and your surroundings. It's the feeling of existing, of having thoughts, feelings, and sensations. It's the reason you can smell the coffee brewing, feel the coolness of the air against your skin, and ponder the deepest mysteries of the universe, all at the same time. But consciousness is more than just basic awareness. It's also about the rich tapestry of subjective experiences we call qualia. These are the raw, unfiltered sensations that make up our unique perception of the world. Imagine the redness of a ripe strawberry. Can you see it in your mind's eye? The sweetness that explodes on your tongue when you take a bite. The feeling of the sun warming your skin on a perfect summer day. These are all qualia the building blocks of our conscious experience. Qualia are what make your red different from my red, your joy different from mine. They are the essence of what it feels like to be you, a unique and irreplaceable perspective on reality. But is this you as solid and real as it seems? That's the question that will send shivers down your spine the illusion of self. Now, hold on to your hats or metaphorical helmets because things are about to get weird. For decades, neuroscientists and philosophers have been poking holes in the idea of a unified permanent self. They argue that this sense of I we cling to might be nothing more than an elaborate illusion, a story our brain constantly constructs based on a jumble of incoming information Think of your brain as a giant information processing center. Different regions handle various tasks. The prefrontal cortex for planning and decision making, the thalamus for relaying sensory information, and the limbic system for emotions and memories. These regions work together to create a unified experience. But is there a central self pulling the strings? Some believe this unified experience might be an illusion. Take Julian Jaynes' bicameral mind theory, for example. Jaynes proposed that in ancient times, humans experienced consciousness differently. He suggests a part of the brain. The limbic system used to speak to another part, perhaps creating a sense of divine guidance or external control. Over time, according to this theory, this bicameral communication faded, leading to the development of our modern, centralized sense of self. 
whether the bicameral theory holds water or not, it raises a disturbing question. If our sense of self is just a product of brain activity, how real is it? And what happens when this finely tuned system goes? Dark, dark, consciousness. All right, buckle up. We're about to delve into the truly terrifying aspects of consciousness. The realm of dark consciousness. Imagine a scenario where your awareness remains, but everything else, your sense of self, your emotions, your connection to the world, fades away. You're trapped inside your own mind, a disembodied observer in a prison of darkness. This is the existential nightmare of dark consciousness. It's the fear that our awareness, the very essence of who we are, could become a horrific curse. This isn't just philosophical. Pondering popular culture is filled with stories that explore the body horror of a mind disconnected from its physical shell. Think of HAL 9000 from 2001, a space odyssey, the disembodied AI whose cold logic leads to destruction, or the terrifying entities from John Carpenter's The Thing, their consciousness warping their bodies into grotesque parodies of life. Even real-life case studies offer glimpses into this darkness. Cotard syndrome, a rare neurological disorder, can cause people to believe they are dead or rotting. Imagine the existential despair of experiencing your own non-existence. These are just a few examples. A taste of the horror that awaits when awareness twists and darkens. But is this inevitable? Or is there more to the story? The hard problem of consciousness. We've explored the unsettling aspects of consciousness. But there's a deeper mystery at play, a philosophical riddle that has baffled thinkers for centuries. This is the hard problem of consciousness, first articulated by philosopher David Chalmers. In essence, the hard problem asks, why is there something it's like to be anything at all? We can understand how the physical processes in our brain allow us to see hear and feel. We can even map these processes to specific brain regions. But why does this complex interplay of neurons give rise to subjective experiences? The redness of a rose, the sweetness of chocolate, the joy of a hug. Science can explain the what of consciousness the physical mechanisms involved. But the why, the subjective experience itself, remains a frustrating enigma. This seemingly simple question has profound philosophical implications. It forces us to confront the nature of reality itself. Are our minds simply byproducts of our physical brains? Or is there something more? Is consciousness fundamental to the universe? Or is it an illusion? These are the questions that will keep us pondering long after the video ends. But fear not, intrepid explorers. In the next section, we'll delve into some mind-bending theories that might just offer some answers. Existential horror and zombies. All right, so we've established that consciousness is a bit of a mystery. And the possibility of dark consciousness is enough to give anyone nightmares. But here's something even more unsettling. What if there are beings out there who look and act just like us, but lack any subjective experience whatsoever? These are the infamous philosophical zombies. Imagine a creature that walks, talks, and even eats like a human, but has no inner world. No feelings, no thoughts, no qualia. It simply reacts to stimuli based on complex biological processes. The idea of philosophical zombies is a thought experiment, but it raises a terrifying question. How can we be sure we're not them? 
What if our own consciousness is just an illusion and we're all just elaborate biological machines going through the motions of life? This is the heart of the existential horror we've been exploring. The possibility that our sense of self, our experiences, our very existence might be nothing more than a cosmic fluke. But before you succumb to despair, there's still hope. In the next section, we'll explore some mind-bending theories that might just offer a way out of this existential maze. Panpsychism and the simulation hypothesis. A glimmer of hope. All right. We've painted a pretty bleak picture so far. But fear not, fellow travelers in the unknown. There are some fascinating theories that might just offer a way out of this existential rabbit hole. First, let's consider panpsychism. This philosophical view suggests that consciousness isn't a special property of complex brains like ours, but rather a fundamental aspect of reality itself. Imagine even the most basic particles, electrons, quarks, possessing a sliver of rudimentary consciousness. According to panpsychism, as matter becomes more complex, so too does this inherent consciousness, eventually giving rise to the rich inner world we experience now. This is just one theory, and it comes with its own set of challenges. But it does offer a comforting thought. We wouldn't be alone in our conscious experience. The universe itself might be teeming with a vast spectrum of awareness. Another mind, Bending theory is the simulation hypothesis, popularized by philosopher Nick Bostrom. This idea suggests that what we perceive as reality might actually be a complex computer simulation created by a far more advanced civilization. In this scenario, our consciousness wouldn't be any less real. It would simply be a product of the simulated world. Whether this is comforting or terrifying is entirely up to you. The point is, these theories offer a departure from the bleakness of philosophical zombies and dark consciousness. They suggest that even if our reality isn't what it seems, there might be more to the story. A universe of mysteries. So, where does this leave us? We've delved into the dark corners of consciousness, explored the existential horror of self-awareness, and encountered some mind, bending theories that challenge our very perception of reality. The key takeaway is this. Consciousness remains a profound mystery. We don't fully understand what it is, where it comes from, or even if we have a monopoly on it in the universe. The possibility of dark consciousness is unsettling, but it also forces us to appreciate the wonder of our own subjective experience. And the theories of panpsychism and the simulation hypothesis, while mind-boggling, offer a glimmer of hope, a suggestion that our consciousness might be part of something far grander than we can imagine. These unsettling thoughts are not meant to keep you up at night, though they probably will. They're an invitation to explore, to question, to delve deeper into the mysteries of the universe and the nature of self, awareness. So tell me, dear viewer in this strange and wondrous universe, are you truly conscious or just a sophisticated illusion?